U.S. federal law enforcement agents executed both a search warrant and a grand jury subpoena on WWE Executive Chairman Vince McMahon. The news came courtesy of WWE's quarterly SEC filings Wednesday, that was nice, where the development was reported. On July 17, 2023, that was just a couple of weeks ago, federal law enforcement agents executed a search warrant and served a federal grand jury subpoena on Mr. McMahon. No charges have been brought in these investigations. The company has received voluntary and compulsory legal demands for documents, including from federal law enforcement and regulatory agencies, concerning the investigation and related subject matters. What the agents were looking for, still unknown. McMahon and then WWE itself released comments afterwards on Wednesday morning to staff about the developments. Vince wrote a letter. In 2022, WWE formed a special committee to review allegations of misconduct against me. The review was concluded in November 2022 following an extensive investigation. Throughout this experience, I've always denied any intentional wrongdoing and continue to do so. I am confident the government's investigation... I was caught off guard. I am confident the government's investigation will be resolved without any findings of wrongdoing. I am focused on completing my recovery process from my recent spinal surgery and on closing our transaction with Endeavor, which will create one of the preeminent global sports and entertainment brands. Well, of course, we got to finish with the important stuff, right? And then WWE released a statement as well. We believe this is a continuation of the investigation that commenced last summer. WWE has cooperated throughout, fully understands and respects the government's need for a complete process. Nick Khan asked about the development on the investor's call, declined to answer other than saying that WWE would be fully cooperative. He confirmed during the call McMahon is on indefinite medical leave after undergoing a spinal surgery. Khan gave no other details, saying they were respecting McMahon's privacy during this time. Now, here's, here's my takeaway from all of this. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. But, you know, there's two types of people in this world. There are the people that uh, have a cursory knowledge of WWE and Vince McMahon and you know, they're in boardrooms and this and that. And then there's uh, the folks like us that have uh, covered the sport, watched wrestling, followed it very, very closely, uh, some of us for decades. And to me, there was a turning point around uh, July of last year when all of this began with Vince McMahon and he, you know, he stepped away and everything like that. And, uh, and that was that what's going to happen when Vince is no longer around? The question had been asked for decades. What is going to happen? Who will be in charge? Et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the, the general public believed that without Vince, this thing was going to collapse. And, you know, if you were a, a close follower of WWE, I don't know what you were thinking. But uh, what I know is that uh, from about 2018 on, it became increasingly clear that uh, this guy was nothing but a disaster and that uh, the company was better off without him. And the product got worse and worse and worse. And listen, whatever you think about this company, 2018, 2019, 2020, I mean, those three years, we went from whatever it was to uh, essentially, this was world championship wrestling. Advertised matches, they don't take place. There's no continuity whatsoever. The show is absolutely atrocious. You know, we, we, uh, we talked about how much it sucked. That's where the world-famous Raw report began, where it was just nothing but belittling the show and how stupid it was and how much it sucked. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to sit here and say I told you so, but, you know, then we got into, oh, let's look at these declines. Let's look at the decline of, uh, of 18 to 49 year over year. Oh, excuse me. They're down 48% or whatever over the last two years. That's a gigantic decline. They were running off people right and left. Well, then this thing went down with Vince. And, uh, you know, I know some people don't believe it, but you're wrong. He did, in fact, 
step away. And uh, Triple H, Nick Khan, you know, Heyman had input and everything like that. Uh, everything changed. And uh, they would announce matches for next week. Hey, we got three matches for Raw next week. Four matches for Raw next week. My God, they all took place. And again, whatever you think about the show, the show improved dramatically when the guy was gone. Let's look at the business over the last 18 months. The business has improved. They have gone from double-digit declines, 18 to 49, to now being one of the only shows in all of television that is consistently up year over year. Now, for a while there, he, he worked his way back in. We've seen it over the last uh, four or five months. But he did not work his way all the way back in. Every now and then, he'd come in, he'd screw everything up. But in general, it was the same crew that had been there when he was, uh, when he was ousted. And uh, it's still miles better. Wait till we get to the WWE uh, earnings report. So what's the point of all of this? The point is, when is everybody else going to figure out we don't need this guy? If he went away and never came back, Everything is going to be fine. We don't need Vince McMahon. He's not adding anything to any of this. He's not making the shows better when he shows up. He's only making them worse. We don't need him in this company. We don't need him to facilitate a sale. We don't need the guy at all. And I'm hoping now maybe everybody else is going to figure this out. But I guess we'll see. We'll get Mike's thoughts after the break and a lot more news. Wrestling Observer Live. Right on the show, Ryan Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. By the way, I just finished a show with Lance Storm. And for those of you that uh, listened to the uh, Brian and Vinny show last night where uh, Granny reviewed a match, which she said was the worst match she ever saw in her life, and she reviewed it and gave it a minus O... <laughs> And we could not figure out what this match was. Well, believe it or not, at the end of the Landstorm figure four daily, he figured it out. Really? So, uh, yes. And, and uh, I am 99.99% I am sure that he is correct. So if you must know what that match is, you can uh, check out the Landstorm figure four daily today. Mike, any thoughts before we move on to some of this other stuff here? Well, without Vince McMahon, you would have, like, 100% less federal grand jury subpoenas, wouldn't you? You know, if, it, if Vince McMahon wasn't there and hadn't been there, you'd probably have, you know, 100% less payouts to people who used to work there. Obviously, you shave off a little percentage for John Laurinaitis, but uh, I just, I'm not surprised whatsoever. He's going to be there as long as... as Ari Emanuel is the head of Endeavor and their friends, the same way that Dana White is going to be there. But unlike the UFC, WWE has proven they don't need him. You know, that's just a fact. Don King lasted forever, and he's still kicking right now, but he declined incredibly. Bob Arum declined incredibly. Other promoters came along when the Dubas and the Goosens started to fall, and they started to take over, the Al Heymans and those people of the like. When it comes to wrestling, we don't really have that. We've had Tony Khan come along. So WWE, this massive entity here, it's, it's completely in its own little world and it functions in its own little world and they've created people inside of that world that can operate this thing how deep does the palace intrigue go back before vince mcmahon went out we had a lot of moves that happened where he wasn't happy or nick khan wasn't happy or this person or that person but the bottom line is without vince the thing kept going and it succeeded and the product on tv did get better it did become more, co more coherent you don't need Vince McMahon there for the production. That's Kevin Dunn. He's been doing it for 30 years. You don't need him there for creative. You have a bunch of writers, and you have Triple H, who has proven his worth at this point. Regardless of what you think about him, he is at least, at the very least, competent, if not much better than that. And you have a whole crew there. You don't need Vince McMahon there. Bottom line, but he'll be there forever. All right, Granny, let's get moving here.
Or not. Uh, not all at once. Ah, wait a minute. Am I supposed to do my... Yeah. I can't find it. Just a minute. Oh, shoot. What's going over there, Granny? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting it. Okay. Did we catch you off guard with our Tuesday night show? Why don't you read another question while we're waiting? Well, I closed the Facebook. Let's see if I can uh, dig it back up here. I'm ready. Sean, okay, I can't never believe mind. the faith you have in Vinny to this day. <laughs> All right. Well, never it's, mind. It's absolutely incredible. Go ahead, Granny. <laughs> it's been how many uh, years? <laughs> what is happening on this show? <laughs> Granny, I you're... I want to know. It's Are your you turn, Granny. Talking? We're waiting for you. Then don't interrupt. Who interrupted? <laughs> that was just... eight seconds of dead air. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.